The Catskill Mountains in New York's Hudson Valley have long been a magnet for artists and writers, and for those who cherish nature. It was here in the 1820s that the first great movement in American art was born, the Hudson River School. Over the next 50 years, painters like Sanford Gifford, Jasper Cropsey, John Kensett, and Frederick Church developed a shared vision of the American landscape. Their mentor, the founder of the Hudson River School, was Thomas Cole. Though he was an English immigrant with little formal training, Cole changed the way Americans thought about their natural surroundings, and he transformed the way nature was portrayed on canvas. In the early 19th century, the United States was a new nation, still in the process of creating its own unique culture. The American landscape, with its vast stretches of uncharted wilderness, was unlike anything in the old world. But not many Americans were interested in preserving their country's wild places. Wilderness was something to be feared or exploited. Yet there were some poets and writers who found inspiration in nature. The novels of James Fenimore Cooper, the poetry of William Cullen Bryant, and the stories of Washington Irving all celebrated the scenic beauty of the Hudson Valley. Together with Thomas Cole, they invented a new way of looking at America's landscape. In 1825, Cole was a young artist living in New York City. That summer, he traveled up the Hudson to spend a month in the Catskills hiking and sketching. Confronted with the grandeur of the wilderness, he would soon create a vision on canvas of the soul of this new land, untamed and filled with promise. For Cole, the Hudson Valley scenery was majestic, awe-inspiring, even terrifying. It perfectly embodied the romantic concept of the sublime. Thomas Cole not only painted what he saw, he also wrote about it in essays and letters. Rural nature is the exhaustless mine from which the poet and the painter have brought such wondrous treasures, an unfailing fountain of intellectual enjoyment where all may drink and be awakened to a keener perception of the beauty of our existence. Cole soon ventured beyond the Catskills, observing nature's changing light and changing moods. He recognized that America was a land in transition, in his famous painting of the Oxbow, a picturesque bend in the Connecticut River, he contrasted a landscape that was settled and domesticated on the right with one that remained wild and untouched on the left. And he included himself in the painting, a witness to the changes taking place around him. Even in these grand vistas, Cole rendered the smallest details with great care. He closely studied natural forms and recorded them in his sketchbook. The sketches would later provide raw material for his paintings. One of Cole's most familiar works is his painting of Catterskill Falls. 
This spectacular waterfall, even higher than Niagara, was already a popular tourist site when he first visited in 1825. Cole created a pencil sketch on site, quickly capturing his impression of the scene. During the 1800s, the falls boasted a viewing pavilion and guardrail for tourists who ventured to the top. Cole took copious notes to remind himself of the details, color, vegetation, and atmosphere. The following winter in his cramped New York City studio, Cole reworked the sketch in charcoal and crayon. At this stage, the work depicted essentially what he had seen, including the tourist pavilion at the top of the falls. But as he painted the composition in oil on canvas, he made changes, reimagining the scene. He was transforming the real into the ideal. I never succeed in painting scenes, however beautiful, immediately upon returning from them. I must wait for time to draw a veil over the common details, the unessential parts, which shall leave the great features whether the beautiful or the sublime, dominant in the mind. In his finished painting of the falls, Cole removed any signs of the hand of man. The only human presence is a Native American warrior, Cole's way of evoking primal, unspoiled nature. By changing the scene on canvas, Cole was altering reality to seek a higher truth about the sanctity of the natural world. A few years later, in 1829, Thomas Cole, like many young American artists, traveled to Europe to study the old masters and gain new experiences. There he met well-established landscape painters like John Constable and J.M.W. Turner. Cole's travels in England and on the continent fired his imagination sparking a new ambition to treat grander subjects. And he incorporated new ideas into his work. But throughout his career, whatever his topic or theme, Cole's emphasis remained the same, a vision of nature as an expression of the divine. As Cole's fame grew, he attracted important commissions from wealthy patrons including The Course of Empire. This series of five large paintings was designed to fill a room and tell a story. The work depicts a single location across centuries as a civilization evolves and declines. The philosophy of my subject is drawn from the history of the past, wherein we see how nations have risen from the savage state to that of power and glory and then fallen and become extinct. Cole drew this sketch, showing how he intended the five paintings to be hung. He wanted them displayed together on one wall, where their narrative would be clear and easy to read. The Course of Empire was set in the mythic past, but it contained a message for Cole's own time, a warning against America's unbridled expansion and materialism and a dire prediction for the future. It took Cole nearly three years to complete The Course of Empire. Much of that time he spent working in a rented studio space at Cedar Grove, the Catskill farm of John Alexander Thompson. And he soon fell in love with Thompson's niece, Maria Bartow. In 1836, Thomas and Maria were married in the West Parlor, and he moved into Cedar Grove's main house permanently. The porch of Cedar Grove provided daily inspiration with its views toward picturesque Catskill Creek and in the distance, the summits of the Catskill Mountains. It was a scene Cole would paint many times over the years. In 1839, Cole moved his studio at Cedar Grove into a section of a new storehouse built for the family farm. He wrote about it in a letter to his friend Asher B. Durand. Did you know I have got into a new painting room? It answers pretty well. 
is somewhat larger than my old one and, being removed from the noise and bustle of the house, is really charming. What I shall be able to produce in it, heaven knows. The 1830s saw a spiritual revival in America. The religious fervor of the time infused Thomas Cole's art. Landscape painting and religious allegory are combined in one of his most important works, The Voyage of Life. This series of four paintings follows a pilgrim making his way from infancy to old age, led by a guardian angel. Cole described his intentions in his journal. The subject is an allegorical one but perfectly intelligible, and I think capable of making a strong moral and religious impression. Cole uses landscape to frame the spiritual challenges that the pilgrim faces over his lifetime. Turbulent rapids lead to a rocky gorge, and menacing demons hover in the sky. The voyager's faith is tested, but ultimately leads him to salvation. There are many windings in the stream of life, and on this idea I have proceeded. Its course toward the ocean of eternity we all know to be certain, but not direct. The Voyage of Life was first exhibited in 1840 at the National Academy in New York, where it was hailed by critics and the public. It would become Cole's most popular work. While he continued to paint scenes from his imagination, Thomas Cole never lost sight of the real vistas that were all around him in Catskill. Living and working at Cedar Grove, he worried that America's rapid expansion and industrial development would destroy the nation's scenery. He raised his voice and his pen in protest. I cannot but express my sorrow that the beauty of such landscapes are quickly passing away. The ravages of the axe are daily increasing. They cut down the forest with a wantonness for which there is no excuse, and leave the herbless rocks to glimmer in the burning sun. Even the view from the porch of Cedar Grove was changing. By 1836, a railway was being built through the valley and Cole was angered by the loss of the forests along Catskill Creek. In one of his later paintings, he included a train, fallen trees, and a woodsman with his ax, symbols of the destruction of nature. Among the inhabitants of this village, he must be dull indeed who has not observed how, within the last 10 years, the beauty of its environs has been shorn away. Year by year, the groves that adorned the banks of the Catskill wasted away. At a time when most saw the wilderness as a source of profit or an obstacle to expansion, Thomas Cole insisted that it was a treasure to be preserved. As a champion for the wilderness, Cole inspired generations of writers and artists. After Thomas Cole's death at the age of 47, his good friend Asher B. Durand paid tribute, depicting Cole with the poet William Cullen Bryant in a Catskill setting. It was a fitting memorial to the artist who began what we now call the Hudson River School. Thomas Cole transformed American landscape painting and he helped to save the American landscape itself. Today, much of the scenery that he loved remains intact. You can see it just beyond the walls of his home in Catskill. The Hudson River School Art Trail will lead you to some of the very places that Cole painted. Follow in the footsteps of a pioneering artist, a man who opened our eyes to the beauty of the American landscape, Thomas Cole.